Yeah, ready to go. <laughs> I All right. Uh, okay, guys, I think we're going to get started. It's about uh, six, a little after six fifteen. Uh, so, welcome to the OpenGov yeah. Hack Night. Uh, I see a lot of new faces. Can you raise your hand if this is your first Hack Night? All right, awesome. Are you guys here because of Demon? Yeah? No? Maybe? No, absolutely. Because you're, you're a draw, right? <laughs> Uh, so this is a place where people come together and learn about open data and work with open data and uh, start projects with open data and uh, just try to learn more about how the government works through that data. So uh, I'm uh, a developer myself um, with a group called Open City, as is Paul Baker here. Uh, and we have been doing this hack night for about a year. And Christopher here is from Smart Chicago Collaborative. He records these things so we can share, uh, share them with the rest of the world because uh, this is actually the template uh, for open government hack night type things. Or I guess they call them civic hack nights in other Civic cities. hack nights. Yeah. So this thing is spread to other cities. There's like at least 10 other cities that do this now. Uh, it's the sort of same format we have where it's every week, same place. People just kind of coming together and keeping on the momentum going for working on new projects. So this is the original right here. And we're broadcasting to the world. So. Uh, uh, we're going to have a cool presentation from Demond Drummer about a project called Inglewood Codes. Uh, before we get to that, we uh, typically go around the room and just do quick introductions, sort of just say who you are and what you're interested in. Uh, and then after that, we will have some time for announcements, if there are any. Um, I believe our, so our sponsor tonight is, uh, is OpenShift, which is a, a subsidiary of, of Red Hat, and they make a little Linux operating system called Red Hat. Uh, and so I think he's running late. You're not here, right? OK. Uh, yeah. So anyways, uh, so he'll be coming. But anyways, yeah, uh, food is recently provided by them. And, they, and he might have an announcement when he, when he gets here, uh, if he gets here. So uh, I guess I'll start with the introduction. So like I said, my name is Derek. I do a lot of things with the data. Uh, I make lots of web apps uh, with that stuff. Uh, and I guess we can go. My name's Andy. I have a, a printing and design company here in Chicago, and we started working with like embedded NFC and just getting a, little, a lot more into technology and printing. So um, I want to, I've been wanting to check this out for a while, so here I am. <coughs> um, I'm Eric Benzantin, um, local web developer. Um, yeah, do, do, do a lot of stuff with uh, open data. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm Will. I'm, I'm a developer for OI, and I'm a hacker with a Uh 
Go for it. Uh, Sam Vega, media producer at OI, uh, currently working on learning more about data driven reporting, so just kind of hanging on, rubbing against people's shoulders. I'm Justin, I'm product optimization specialist at Grubhub, uh, basically data, data analyst, and I'm here because I like to delve into data and dig through it and see what kind of quotes I can come up with. I'm Alex, I'm the marketing analyst at Grubhub. Uh, I came here because I want to learn more about data analysis. Awesome. <laughs> um, hi, my name's Andrew. Uh, I work with these guys, and I work as a data analyst as well. So I'm just sort of curious to always learn about uh, more more data and what we can learn from it. I'm Linda. I'm not a developer, but I have a business background and fairly analytical. So uh, I'm learning to I'm learning a lot about big data and uh, mapping historical sites in Chicago. My name is Kim Carr, and I'm here to represent ICA Enterprises. We're very interested in big data and hosting the Technology Summit um, this October. And so I'm here just sort of to get connected to those folks doing things in government and here to hear Devon today specifically. Um, so I have some flyers about the Technology Innovation Summit that I would love to share with those that are interested in innovation in government. Uh, big data happens to be one of our panel uh, discussions this year. Uh, I'm David Eads. I'm a reporter for the, or excuse me, news applications developer um, slash reporter for the Chicago Union. I help start the Geek Chicago, and I run a hacking group called the Supreme Shack and Coding Group. Uh, Hi, I'm Chuck Lay. I'm an IT consultant slash trainer. Uh, help train people to get their technical certifications at Cisco, Microsoft, and just have general interest. Hi, I'm Kelly Ball, and I do have management consulting right now, but before I used to be more involved in public policy in DC and some developers, so I'm trying to get more involved. Um, I'm Nina Sandman, I'm the online operations manager for American Medical News, which is published by the AMA, and uh, some of you may have seen that it is ceasing operations on September 2nd. Um, I wrote the platform that the website is on. I wrote it in Perl, which is a little bit old now. And, uh, and um, it's been on this platform for uh, 13 years with just a few tweaks. And I'm really excited about new adventures, um, learning, modernizing my skills, and doing something that would be um, useful to the community. Hi, my name is Burrow Pope. Um, I work as a uh, social media and communications uh, fellow at the MIFA Challenge, uh, which is a local nonprofit that that tries to increase uh, youth voice in uh, government. And uh, we're working on we're trying to start a new project called Represent Me Chicago, uh, which is like an online platform that gives youth the direct access to their like. I'm Anna. I'm an undergraduate at U Chicago, and I'm curious. I'm Valerie. Um, I just graduated from the U of C, and I work at the Consortium on Chicago School of Research. I'm really interested in learning more about developing. I don't know any actual programming. I'm Aaron. I'm, a, I'm about to start a master's program at U Chicago at the Air School, and I'm also curious to some. I'm Corey. I'm at Albert Stacey, and also run a project called Edifice. To make open data more useful for developers and researchers. Uh, I'm Josh Kalev. I'm a GIS data analyst at Gear Maps, um, and I do CPS related data stuff. Uh, my name is Marvin Evans. I work as a web design teacher, and I'm also into web and mobile development. And I'm here to learn and improve skill sets. I'm Paul Baker, design design researcher at Webatex and Open City and Open Data Institute. And we work with Josh on school cuts and school related and we do a lot of school related stuff so we want to you guys. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, come on, drummer. I'm at uh, Team Board Inglewood. Uh, I'm Andrew Cedar. I do GIS analysis for the Chicago Community Trust. I'm Bradley Butterfield. I work for a Chicago real estate company and stalk Derek and Pablo on the web constantly. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andy Martin. I'm a web developer by day and at night I have a pet project uh, called VAMP, which is a mobile app to 
provide geo frame data specifically around the topic of uh, sexual assault, uh, human trafficking, um, and that and I work with various team on that. Awesome. Right, awesome. Oh, thank you. Um, and <laughs> my name is Chris Woodford. I'm a project manager at the Smart Chicago Collaborative, and I'm also the Chicago Code for America for Gay Tech. All right, so uh, next on the agenda is announcements. Does anybody have anything to announce? Christopher? What? No? Nothing? Soon. <laughs> gotcha. David? Excuse me. Uh, Free Geek Chicago also holds a hack day every Saturday from 1 p.m. till uh, 5 p.m. Uh, you can look it up at freegeekchicago.org. And we're having a big event on uh, September 21st called Software Freedom Day. So come talk to me if you're interested in software freedom. And that's up in Golden Square. It's up in Golden Square. Yeah. yeah, right up. Yeah. Other announcements? All right, well, we can jump. Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Did everyone catch um, our thing in Fox News Chicago last week? Oh, yeah. We, so, yeah, last week the uh, Hack Night was covered by Fox News uh, Chicago, and some people were interviewed, and it was pretty cool, right? I don't know. You have anything? So, um, takes on that, Christopher? So, uh, let's you, see. There's a I video online. We can do it online. So, the Wall Street Journal covered the Chicago hacking scene. Yeah, they did. Probably. Well, no, I'm Googling. Yeah, yes. she's Googling. Our hackers. <laughs> uh, it's probably. Uh, yeah. uh, there we go. There it is. Boom. So last week, or last week, um, the Wall Street Journal covered uh, the Chicago civic hacking scene. Interviewed a lot of us, made us look yeah, I'll, I'll very like, good. I'll recreate the scene, the picture. So that's <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> and what we do. Um, oh, there's an audio portion of it yeah. that I wasn't aware of that I'll have yeah. to look at later. Um, Fox 32 News uh, saw the article and decided to do a, uh, a, a news story about the Half Nights. Uh, that aired um, last Tuesday. Um, I was hoping that by airing that we get a little bit more people in here and some well, more good, people reaching out. Has anybody heard of this thing through this story? Anybody? No? Yeah? Oh, you did? Oh, awesome. Yay. Oh, yeah. And I have the, the printout on my desk and I've been sharing it around. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Well, there's local media in action for you. Right? Mission accomplished. Right? That's great. So. That's that. Yeah, so anyways, yeah, there's a uh, video segment. Is it at the top? Yeah, there's a video segment as well if you guys want to. Oh, sorry, the, the Fox News thing. If you go to, I don't know what it was called in Fox um, News, but anyway, you can hear Fox there too. It's pretty cool, right? Well, it is. Um, OK, well, I guess if there's, uh, so did you have any announcements or anything? Or? Uh, yeah. I'm a late but I'd love yeah. to jump in with a quick announcement. I, my name is Jamie Ponce. I work for the C40 Cities Climate Leadership Group in Maryland, Los Angeles. And we've been talking here in the last few weeks about an upcoming event this Saturday at the Notre Dame Nature Museum. I just did my way over here from Notre Dame, which is a fantastic space for a full day event that brings together entrepreneurs, business people, and technical minded web developers, analysts, and visualizers of big sustainability data. The event's called Wheels, Energy, and Trash. Um, we'll have three tracks to the event, as you can guess, on public transportation ridership, energy efficiency, and increasing uh, use of public transportation, uh, also landfill waste diversion. And we will be developing <coughs> ideas to fill the pipeline of great technical applications of data to address these huge resource efficiency issues. We have more than $2,700 in prizes. We have great judges from the city and the private sector. Um, we're we have a terrific group that signed up. But there's still more room for others who'd like to join. Uh, I'll send around little business cards with uh, links to our website and to the Eventbrite sign up. So we are looking for lots more creative ideas 
and a few more creative people. Um, Derek will be joining us for the event and talking a bit about tech skills. We'll have a policy workshop during the course of the day. Um, and again, the Node of Art Museum is a pretty cool place to, to be hosting us for a day of great thinking and inspiring ideas. Thanks. Awesome. Cool. All right, well, I guess without further ado, then, we will proceed to the main event, which is what you've all been waiting for. Come on, drummer from Inglewood Codes and Team of Inglewood. Here we go. Um, I want to introduce uh, the organization and have a slide up show. Slideshow photos. Oh, photos. But um, just in the background, I'd like to just introduce the project. But um, my name is Jamal Drummer. We stand over here. Uh, I'm an organizer, and they call me a tech organizer at Teamwork Inglewood. I'm going to talk about what that means in a minute. But Teamwork Inglewood was founded in uh, March of 2003. We just celebrated 10 years of existence uh, with basically no fanfare. Uh, because there's a lot of work to do, right? Um, in 2003, uh, Lisk Chicago teamed up with St. Bernard Hospital, uh, which is a very old, like more than 100-year-old hospital uh, run by an order of French-Canadian nuns uh, uh, in the Inglewood community. Um, also with the, uh, at the time, uh, Park National Bank and uh, Inglewood United Methodist Church. And the three entities came together with Lisk support and founded Teamwork Inglewood. The idea was to build an organization that would unite uh, residents and various facets in the neighborhood, organizations, other institutions, including Kennedy King College, uh, to improve the quality of life in the West Inglewood and Inglewood community areas. Uh, this is, we all know about Inglewood if you're, who's from Chicago or, okay, right? So we all know about Inglewood is like the symbolically, you know, it's a symbolic like, neighborhood that is you know, suffering with, with drugs and gang violence, suffering from failing schools, right? high crime, foreclosure. I think an article called it as ground zero for Chicago's for foreclosure crisis, which isn't exactly accurate. Uh, and that, that tends to be the case, right? The data uh, doesn't really justify Inglewood's reputation. Right? Uh, there are many neighborhoods who have had an increase in crime. Inglewood has had a, a drastic decrease in crime, and yet still, just as recently, I think as last night, a WGN decided to run a feature link story on how bad Inglewood is, where the best news that they could find was children who tracked down a cop to show them a wounded dog that needed help. Right? Um, they didn't find Inglewood codes. They didn't find teamwork. They didn't find the Resident Association of Greater Inglewood. They didn't find the fact that uh, there's, there's a circus coming to Ogden Park, a midnight circus. That's, they'll be kept out in one of our parks all weekend. Uh, they didn't find uh, the STEM schools that we already have, not the ones that are coming down the pipeline. They didn't find the block leaders that have been working for many, many years and decades, keeping their block strong, right? And so uh, at Teamwork Inglewood, we uh, work with block club leaders, local organizations, and the city of Chicago and funders to ensure that we're all working and, and, and rowing in the same direction. Some may have a, a motorboat, some may have a paddle, right? Some may be swimming, right? But as long as we're moving in the same direction, right, uh, we can get the job done. Uh, I started working at Teamwork Inglewood in 2010 uh, under the auspices of the Smart Communities Program. They came through recovery funding. Remember the recession? Right. Um, uh, the uh, Department of Commerce um, uh, had a whole bunch of recovery money, and part of it was to in some areas, lay down broadband infrastructure, right? In rural areas of the country, and also some suburban and urban areas that did not have broadband. Uh, in Chicago, what we saw was that there was a lot of broadband capacity in the city, but the broadband adoption was very low in some neighborhoods. And so they took five communities that were representative of this problem. Uh, one community was Inglewood, which includes actually two uh, neighborhoods plus a piece of another one, right? So you have Inglewood. Uh, immediately to our west is Chicago Lawn. Immediately to our south is Auburn Gresham, right? So in the southwest, you had a uh, relatively diverse Chicago Lawn community, primarily black uh, Inglewood and uh, Auburn Gresham communities. Moving up north, we have Pilsen, right? Which is primarily uh, Mexican and immigrant. Um, and we have some, I guess, a few other folks in Pilsen as well. Then we have a predominantly Puerto Rican and black community in Humble Park and um, that, that greater Humble Park area. And so those five neighborhoods banded together under the auspices of the Smart Communities Program. The idea was to have, on the one hand, uh, computer labs 
that wasn't just a bank of computers that you come in and get on Facebook on. That lab had an instructor, not a lab resource person, but somebody who was holding classes, published her like every day, right? On basic internet use, basic Word, Excel, PowerPoint, online banking, right? Job searching online, right? Email. Um, when we started, we had a lot of seniors. But what we saw in Inglewood is that as we were teaching these classes, uh, particularly when we went out into the schools, uh, I was finding people that were my age. I just turned, well, I didn't just turn 30. I wish I just turned, but I turned 30 this year, right? Um, and there were people my age that were in the class that needed to set up email, right? They were trying to figure out, right, how to get their resume right, store their Google Drive so they can send it out whenever from their mobile phone, right? Um, and I'm going to come back to why that's the case in a minute. So on the one hand, we had this family net center and a family net center manager who was an instructor, not just a lab aide, but somebody who was teaching basic computer skills that were sorely needed, right, or greatly needed. Uh, we also had a business resource network. We had really small businesses in the area that were not using the web or technology in general, you know. I know there are some benefits in Cook County. <laughs> Of not of only accepting cash, right? Yeah, like really high taxes, right? But uh, in some cases, we were seeing that businesses were losing money because they weren't adopting technology. So we had a business resource network uh, focused uh, exclusively on reaching out to small businesses, ranging from the hardware store to the daycare provider, and using technology uh, to uh, in, uh, improve their business practices and, and cut costs and possibly increase revenues. We also had a component called the Digital Youth Summer Jobs Program, where we took about a dozen youth from every neighborhood and uh, attempted and did our best to slide through the tech, uh, kind of tech-related positions. A lot ended up doing non-tech stuff, but I think uh, we, we did our best. I think we did a pretty good job of ensuring that uh, the employers weren't just having the high school students sit in the corner all summer, but actually engage them. So we actually had, uh, I think Chicago One had a dentist um, that had the high school student literally digitize a lot of paper data into Excel. And that uh, that has to sort of taught the dentist like how to use Excel and things like that. So that was like one of the best storage in that Chicago one. Uh, then you have my component. Um, actually there's another component called the, the portals where we have this website that I'm not going to bring up called Inwood Portal. The idea is how do we use the web to tell the good stories out there so that ABC and WGA and the Tribune sometimes don't own the narrative on our neighborhood. So how do we own our own narrative? Well we put up a website called Inwood Portal which is developed by Webitex. And um, this, the idea is that this is an online platform that anybody can post to. Of course, we have an editor. You can't just post anything, right? So anybody can post to it and get their news and information out. Uh, and then there's my component, which is the tech organizer. My job was to build relationships. It was like the best job ever, right? Build relationships with community leaders. And you know, I worked on campaigns. I worked on issue-based campaigns, global advance and issue-based campaigns. My job was not to find leaders and get them to move in the direction I wanted them to move in. My job was to literally ask the very honest question, what are you doing and how can I help? What role does technology play in your efforts of bringing more parents into the school? What role does technology play in you uh, consolidating the base of block club leaders under the idea of a block club federation, ensuring that everybody's on the same page as far as community meetings, and everybody has information they need to get out to their blocks, right? What role does technology play in a young person's uh, career, right? And so it's very cool. I got to build amazing relationships with strong local leaders and, and, and just kind of pretty much being like the geek squad for organizing, right, uh, in England. It was really exciting. And I learned a lot. Um, so my first summer at Team Working Boys, so we're moving into two, uh, 2011, um, we, we were approached by After School Matters. We had submitted an application because we said, okay, we just launched this web portal. I think somebody submitted an application saying we're going to use youth to promote the web form, right? So they came at us and said, okay, that's a good idea. Can we flesh that out? And in that meeting, I saw an opportunity, right? <laughs> um, having spent some time in the tech um, in the in tech circles, I, I was at Webitex for about a year as an organizing fellow, looking at the intersection of organizing the technology. I saw all these people who had this really cool job of coming into work, like building things and then going home <laughs> and building things on the side. I'm like, this is really cool, right? And I busted up the energy of asking a few folks, like, how do you do that? I think I would, like, leer over, like, Eric's computer. <laughs> and, like, kind of, a, like, what are you doing? Well, I don't even know how to form a question of, like, how do I get into this, right? So at that moment around the table at our office, uh, I, I paused and said, hey, can we just, like, scrap the whole idea and just teach teens how to build their own websites? 
I know there's this thing called HTML that's like, you know, that's, that's teachable and learnable in a summer. And then CSS to style websites. Can we do that? And I'm like, okay, whatever. That, that sounds interesting. I don't know what that is, right? But that sounds cool, right? So he said, well, give me a proposal. So we redid our entire proposal for 2011. And in summer 2011, we took 15 teams from the Inglewood community and spent six weeks teaching them basic HTML and CSS. Now, we ended with sites that nobody saw. They were just developed locally. And they, they just email all the documents to themselves. This is before Drive really got, you know, really wicked and stuff. Um, and it was kind of, you know, it was somewhat anticlimactic. But the story always stayed with us. We knew we were on to something when the following summer, summer 2012, we got a bunch of calls from teens asking if we were going to be doing that program again. Then we had middle school students walking in. You know, we want to have a website. And I'm like, who, who told you that, right? Like, who, we don't even do that. Like, what are you talking about, right? And so I thought, well, summer 2013, we better do something about this, right? We should have a program um, that, that does this. And so that program is uh, Inglewood Codes. You see the photos of our students um, on the screen there. These are photos that I snapped while teaching. Uh, become a jack of many trades. Uh oh, hold on. Okay, you don't have a button. I don't know. Okay. There we go. All right. So and apparently, I also call it Sydney Hackman. It's okay. It's not many names. But the project in 2013, summer 2013, is uh, Inglewood Codes. We can do the next slide. Um, so, what I want to go over briefly, not too much longer. Uh, it's just the general idea behind Eagle Codes, uh, what it took to get it done this summer. Uh, we're in our last week. We have two days left. Um, and so uh, what it took to uh, do that this summer, what we accomplished, what we learned, and also what's next, right? And so for the next slide, we um, the general idea is, is this. Uh, I believe, and my organization believes, right, that the best way for this city to stay competitive in this new economy is not only to attract the best tech talent to our city with a Lollapalooza tech fest, right? But to really grow the talent in the neighborhoods, resident talent that's lived here that likely won't leave, that has a commitment to the city. Uh, that doesn't have to be lured, it just has to be developed, right? Right here in Chicago. So we believe that if Chicago can grow a broad base of tech talent that reflects the city across the entire city, I think we'd be in a very good position uh, moving into the new economy. I uh, watched, and just the, the little bit of time I spent working at a web firm, I saw folks being poached by New York and Silicon Valley from small web firms here in the city. And I hear that story over and over again. I'm not an expert on labor markets, particularly the tech world, but I have enough anecdotal evidence to make me concerned that we need to start growing talent because it's hard to compete with New York. It's hard to compete with San Francisco. We can play that game, and we can be growing our own talent and be that magnet uh, for, for talent uh, from all across the world. On the next slide, um, we're going to go into, and this is me saying the same thing in front of Ronnie Mangle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's kind of smiling, right? He's like, who is this guy? <laughs> so uh, on the next slide, um, we have uh, what it took. Uh, and I, as I was trying to say, how do I describe all the different stakeholders and people who made this happen? Um, again, I talked about the Smart Communities Program. So that's the whole basis of this, right? That's the basis of my salary, is how I can exist in the neighborhood, is how I can even talk about technology exclusively. And nobody say, why aren't you talking about safety? Why aren't you talking, right? So it took two years of the Smart Communities Program to say, hey, technology plays a role in building neighborhoods and building communities. It took Bush Chicago, who, um, wrote that grant that was able to pay my salary to keep me there. And I'm talking about grants and stuff, but this is just the way it works, right? And to say technology has a role to play in the neighborhoods, right? It's a list that connected the World Business Chicago and this idea of Seed Chicago, which was going to have this curated Chicago page for Kickstarter projects. And so we were already going to do something in summer 2013. So when LISC, who I've been hammering, say, hey, you have all this, like this big pot of money, or so I think, right? <laughs> I think all this has like this pot of gold sitting in their basement or something. And I'm like, why don't you like give me some resources, buy some computers so I can just teach some students how to code so we can show that there's talent in the neighborhoods and just need to develop them. And so after, I guess, hearing me say, like, ask that for like a, a few months, they connected us to World Business Chicago, who had reached out to us saying, we need local projects to feature, right, on our curated Kickstarter page. And so that's how we got connected to World Business Chicago. The city of Chicago, has all the while for the Department of Innovation and Technology been um, a uh, 
a strong ally to playing some like inside game kind of stuff, uh, which is pretty cool. I'll get to that in a minute. Then of course after and then of course after school matters, which funded our 2011 program, and we brought to the table again in 2013. What after school matters provides is uh, resources for uh, uh, an additional instructor in addition to myself, right? But also stipends for youth, right? Because we don't have bus cars to give the students, so they can get this stipend, they can like get to in front of the program, maybe buy a candy bar or something, right? So it's just like a very modest stipend. It's not even worth really talking about, but it's modest. The students appreciate it. So we're able to handle that. They also help us buy supplies, right? So all these different stakeholders. And of course, city colleges provided the space for us to uh, host our project. We had 25 youth. We were aiming for 30. We settled at 25 because their labs are maximum capacity is 24. Instead of having the original plan of two groups of 15 cycling in and out of a computer lab, half the day spent on leadership, half the day spent on code, we spent like two thirds of the day on code, a third of the day on leadership, right? And that was a decision that the students made. We want to come more. I'm like, oh, okay. We're gonna have to kick something out. But um, but city colleges provide that space free of charge. They gave me what it would would have cost, uh, which made me make a bunch of calls to Department of Innovation and Technology. Uh, it is expensive, right? But they gave us their premier smart lab. You're gonna see a picture of it in a minute. Uh, and so it took some other things. Um, on the uh, on the slide on the next one. Um. It took uh, 178 project backers who participated and supported our Kickstarter. Uh, we set an initial goal of raising $5,500 to, uh, to buy supplies and equipment for 15 teams. And um, a few people got their hands on it. I think Derek sent a tweet like Saturday morning, and like three hours later it was fully funded, right? So uh, that was like our, that was our, uh, that was our fourth day of um, of, 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 of Kickstarter, we had like 41 days left. So I was like, what do we do with these 41 days? This double the goal, right? And let's, let's go for 30 students, right? Which was more about like just unbridled passion and zeal, and it wasn't really well thought out if I can admit that. And I was like, oh, let's just double the number of students, right? Endless complications of just doubling the number of students uh, in, a, in a project where you're teaching students how to code, right? Um, but uh, on the next slide, uh, as far as what we accomplished, right? There's a lot of stuff we can accomplish. Uh, we can go over some, uh, some details and questions. But we touched a lot of stuff, right? So we've been running about two weeks behind my own scheduled uh, curriculum the entire project, right? So as the students are like, oh, this is really interesting. I'm like, we don't have time to really look into this, right? But I had to stop, right, and start enjoying the process, right? Giving students time and space to really digest and play around, right? So we started out with HTML in the first like week and a half, right? So we had three days in the first week, then it was what? Was it Memorial Day? Um, so we had three days in the first week. That's really building community, building that rapport with the teams, right? Which I thought could happen in a week, and I always forget this, but actually it's the entire time, right? I, I think there are students that just now say, oh, Demond, I can trust him, you know, it's been like 10 weeks, right? But, uh, but that's understandable, right? So we spent about the first week and a half on HTML. Of course, HTML is written like every day after that. Uh, after we were doing like styling rules inside of HTML, this might have been a bad way of teaching it. Because um, you, you gotta keep people interested, right? So it was like, hey, this is HTML, and you can throw some color in there, right? To keep the students that are like pretty solid HTML like interested. So they were like doing alignment and stuff while the other students are still trying to figure out HTML. Uh, so now we jump to CSS. So like forget half of what you learned, right? <laughs> right? You're experiencing what it feels like for change to happen. This is what happened, right? <laughs> right? This thing called CSS came out, right? Now you can do your styling rules on a separate document. Do you see how easy this is? They hated it. They're like, oh, wait, this is actually faster, right? So it was really neat. So we did CSS, um, and then now we're in literally week three, right, um, uh, of, of, of instruction, right? In week four, actually at the end of week three, I pulled the team leaders in. So I'm going to pause right there. Uh, very quickly, we realized that having three instructors, I'll go over who those were, and at this time, 25 students in the room, a lot of students will fall through the cracks, you know, it's very, the management was just a little rough. So we said, okay, we have some very charismatic students in here, some very talented students. We're creating teams. We had this idea of a team competition midway through our project anyway, let's go ahead and do the teams now. So one day we, it was like a basketball match. We just lined up the students. Your team leader, your team leader, your team leader. Hire your team. You can hire four people. And they literally, they knew each other, they hired their teams. 
right? Some better than others, right? <laughs> you saw the ones that you saw the very shrew, like the, the, the future company owner. Is. <laughs> and I'm like, that one over here, this very unpopular person is this smart over here. I'm right? like, oh, okay. Um, so they built their own team. So we had these weekly team leader meetings where at first I was running around from computer to computer to computer, like, oh, fix this, fix this. And uh, my co-instructor, a teaching fellow from CPS, funded by the MacArthur Foundation, and this National Summer Learning Association, they wanted to map what we did to the Common Core, which is an interesting idea. I'm not sure that's really useful. But anyway, um, I support it 100%. But <laughs> uh, he was saying, he was saying, Demond, you are, you're, you're sweating, and the students aren't sweating. This is like the second week. You're sweating, and the students are not sweating. They need to sweat, right? Like, wow, okay, this is an interesting concept. So what happens? We set up a rule sheet, and the, 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 we had this, uh, this this quote called "Teamwork makes the dream work," right? So we had this uh, we had this big piece of paper taped to the wall that says how we work together. If you have a question, ask your peers, and if you still have a question, ask more peers, right? Only if nobody in the class knows the answer can you ask an instructor. So for two full weeks, actually about three weeks. Over here, like, Mr. Drummond, like, I'm just pointing to the board. <laughs> right? Because how do you replicate this idea? As far as I know, when I, when I, whenever I'm learning like code and stuff, when I was on Ruby on Rails, you have to like go to the web and you ask your peers. Right? You email somebody, you go to some kind of forum, right? You're asking your fellow developers, right? So how do we replicate that with students who are used to sitting in a room and somebody is like feeding them knowledge and information? Does that make sense? So how do we like break that habit of learning? Right? So we said, okay, we have these teams, so you ask your team first. If you can't find an answer, you come out of your team and find somebody who has the answer. And only if no, no team knows the answer can you ask some struggle, right? So that was one way that we learned together. So what happened is, it was, I think, mid-June. So this is like literally the second week of our project. Uh, I've been really wanting, and Juan Pablo knows this, I really was deliberating on whether or not we were going to use GitHub. Now, GitHub, to use Git, you have to have like administrative privileges on a computer. You got to install some stuff. KKC was not having that. I was like halfway through the first sentence of my request. They just looked at me. I said, never mind. <laughs> I'm not going to have a lab in front of you, right? Like, so let's just, I didn't say anything, right? But come to find out, as of June, I think, 15th or 18th, or I'm sorry, July 15th or 18th, uh, the entire Git flow could be done in the browser. So there was no need to install anything uh, natively. On, on the computer. So the students could create a, create a repository, right? create their readme document, right? create their HTML file, right? create their CSS file, push the GH pages, right? make that the default. Right? Now they can make pull, they, they, now they can make branches and do pull requests and merge and even collaborate on that with their sites. And what's happening? When it gets pushed to the GH pages branch, the website's online now, which solves the problem of these sites being just like on a local browser, right? Or just on a local uh, computer and nobody can see them. Now their site's on the web, now there's more pressure, right? It's like, wow, this is real. I'm really online, right? Everybody familiar with GitHub? Yeah, so it's really cool. Then you have gists, you have know, like Markdown, you can do all kinds of cool little lesson plans. I would do entire lessons plans uh, on, on a gist document. They're just like scrolling down. I'm gonna show you one. We were teaching the CSS box model. It was called knock out the box, right? Um, so we did Bootstrap. Um, so yeah, so I showed them uh, GitHub. So they were using GitHub just to do some basic uh, HTML and CSS. And then the week of the, the, the um, team competition. So we wanted to encourage the students not just to learn, but to show how this tech stuff can like, empower them to get back to their neighborhood. So we decided to uh, create a, uh, a website for the Eward Arts Festival. And the idea was that the five teams would compete uh, to build the best site possible for the Eward Arts Festival, which happened this past week. Uh, so uh, that week, they uh, released Bootstrap. So they received a briefing from the organizer of the Eward Arts Festival. And then for the next hour, they were briefed on Bootstrap. So having learned GitHub for like a day, right, the previous Thursday, right, the next Monday, they were introduced to this idea called Bootstrap. You're on Twitter, but people at Twitter created this thing called Bootstrap, you know, which has a whole library of CSS um, that you can use and rapidly develop a, a website. Uh, that looks really clean and professional. And they were having a ball with you, right? Um, so they spent a whole week using Twitter, learning Twitter Bootstrap, learning how to use it, but also building a site for a client. 
And so a week later, they all had completed sites. I think we'll find some, we'll show some, maybe not. Um, uh, and so that was that. And so this this past week, uh, actually last week, late last week, we started with the Raspberry Pi. We wanted to do the Raspberry Pi earlier, but again, I had to pause and learn to appreciate the process, right? Say, okay, we're doing this like HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript stuff. We're still figuring out GitHub and Bootstrap is like this extra added layer of uh, simplicity on one end, but complexity on the other. So let's just like stay there and let it let it uh, percolate and marinate, right? Um, and so now we're opening up the pod, and, um, and it's pretty exciting. So it's like a whole new wow factor now. I mean, if it got old, uh, it, it became very new this past Thursday and Friday. So with the, the next slide. Uh, lessons learned. So again, we've done this for 10 weeks. Um, I tried to be very high level because I can go into endless detail about all kinds of complications and successes. But um, one thing that we did learn is that small is beautiful. The original 15 was actually a very good number. And we should have just probably stayed there because uh, you can go much deeper with fewer students. That would allow me to be much, much, much more selective. Not to say that the students that we don't have are sharp or the students we have aren't sharp, but we could have been even more selective. Does that make sense? And really model and go maybe a little further, right? It, so small is beautiful. Not, uh, that's not to say that we didn't have the capacity to handle. We had three instructors, 25 students, right? That's a pretty good ratio. Um, Going deep versus going broad, right? Spending a lot of time so you really know HTML and why you name a file index on HTML. So you wonder why your like, you know, your your repository isn't live online. Well, you don't have an index on HTML, right? The web does not know where to start, right? Um, and this came up this morning. He's like, oh my god, he has like this whole site. It's not working. I'm like, it starts with an I. <laughs> it's like, oh, index. God, I'm like, why do we do that class? Because that's the first time. You know what I mean? It's just, so we could go a little deeper and not try to go so fast, right? Uh, we jumped into JavaScript and had to jump right back out. Because <laughs> 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 right? it's not, you know, it's not HTML, right? It's, 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 it's a whole new way of thinking. And I'm like, well, we have three weeks left, and we're going to create a button that shows something on the screen when you click it, and like keep it at that. You know, and let's teach enough JavaScript so the students can do a carousel for Bootstrap and, and know what it's doing, right? Uh, so they can call that function and, 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 and actually know what they're doing there. So we did enough just so they could have a carousel. So you'll see some carousels in the sites I show you, right? Um, building in time to debug bad learning habits that have been acquired over the last, what, upwards to, to 10 years in this education system, right? I mean, that, that's to put it politely, right? Just, just debugging this idea that there is wisdom in the classroom beyond the instructor, right? There are ways that you can jump ahead of the instructor. You don't have to wait. There's always something to do, always something to learn, right? How do you debug these bad learning habits? One thing I learned is not just to say, y'all should go do more. Go to W3 schools and find something else to do, right? No, they need guided, like, extra activities, right? All kinds of overplanning, right, that I was not prepared to do, right? So, that's one way that we can begin to debug these learning habits, right? How to do that self-exploration and self-discovery, right? Uh, teamwork truly does make the dream work. So on the one hand, you know, we probably didn't have enough to really have the students even be incentivized to jump out and just to explore. Many students did, right? But it wasn't, I don't think, a common practice, right? But as far as the teams working together and solving each other's problems, right? There's a young man named Kai Massey who, um, I started noticing as the students were working on their final sites, the design was very consistent. Everybody that he helps forks his repository <laughs> and it customizes what's going on, right? But the thing is, that's the point, right? Now they all they all look the same, but there are some consistent features. And it's just different enough. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. All right, Kai got his own little bootstrap going, right? He has like a whole thing. You see him running around. I'm like, okay, this is neat. I'm not sure if he's promoting it or, or what, but uh, <laughs> but he's doing amazing work, right? He was a guy who, like, if we could stay on uh, JavaScript, he was the one that we would have stayed for because he was all over it. He would call his team members at home. Hey, hey what do you say about the, they're like, why are you calling us at nine o'clock? <laughs> but he would go home and do this stuff. Right? Matter of fact, I asked him to change something, and he changed it. I, I was going to show you his crazy background, but anyway. Um, Focus on concrete projects and deliverables. One thing we did well was focus on concrete projects and deliverables. Every day, teams and team leaders were held accountable to a deliverable, right? And so midweek or midway through the project, week five, they had to complete an entire website, 
right? Um, but each day of that project, there was a little the first day, wireframes, just drawing pictures of your site. So you have these people over here like with boxes and they have like the you know, IMG. It's really cool to see teams doing that, right? Like drawing out the site they want to build first. Uh, making it real, one thing that we did not do, and this is just my own bad habit, just like work, 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 right? We could have paused taken a field trip, right? And met some real life web developers, right? Maybe schedule more guest speakers, you know? We had this very accelerated, ambitious timeline that had no room, right? For, um, and we were behind it, and I was like, we don't have time to even have a guest speaker, right? So making it real for our fall cycle, uh, we are going to schedule more field trips, uh, to create, to, to, to expose the students to the people and places of this world, not just the code, right? It's not real until you have a story that you can connect with. Um, living in the cloud, right? So GitHub was amazing because I could see every student's code, and we could change labs, you know, if we had to, and still be able to work, right? So everything's in the cloud. We can go anywhere and do anything, right? Um, at the same time, we need dedicated space. Ideally, it's not set up as a classroom where I'm over here talking, talking about all eyes up here, right? The teens can be on their little bean bags and stuff, and there's like projectors projecting to like all four corners. So there's no idea of a central, right, authority knowledge figure, right? It's about the group coming together and finding a solution, right? Um, so that's it. And so what's next is uh, the. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. I'm uh, we are doing a fall 2013 cycle, a continuation of the Ooh. summer. So we're going to dive deeper into JavaScript and deeper into the Raspberry Pi. The goal this summer was to use the Pi to be a server to host their sites online. The incentive uh, on working toward that was like dramatically reduced when we were allowed to like do the entire kit process on GitHub and Collab, right now, do the browser. So the need for that was rapidly diminished. Um, this was actually my cheap way of getting, well, actually, there are similar ways to just get other sources. But still, I mean, we want to show what a, a server looked like and stuff. Uh, so fall 2013, we're doing more JavaScript, more Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm already working with the instructor that was with us this summer. He's at STAG. Uh, we're talking about the idea of doing a code club at STAG. I did one at Wentworth. It was just like this little pilot. Um, and it was cool, right? But uh, he's really interested in bringing this to his uh, to the school. Um, yes, he's mapping this to the Common Core, but he said, Demond, if I'm teaching this, I'm not teaching math. And the kids have to test in math, right? Like, this is, that there's no way around that. That said, this, we can reinforce Common Core standards in the after school club. So, how do we do that while teaching code, right? So, that's a pretty good question. Um, more field trips, uh, mentorship because the students are on GitHub. Um, there are some students who believe they are, quote unquote, GitHub famous. Right? With all the 12 followers. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I got 25. What do you have? <laughs> but uh, but um, mentorship, right? So, yes, coming out to the project, inviting developers to come out and tell their story. And that's really what it is telling their story on the one hand. Having students come to these types of spaces as well. But also just the connection on, right, in the web. Like, hey, now, this is like really screwed up. Why right? you still have styling features in your HTML? I saw like a aligned center <laughs> in the middle. I was like, ah, what? I thought we went over this like four weeks ago. You can't do this anymore, right? So being able to have those interactions, or like, hey, you know, Derek, like, you know, how do I do this, right? Or can you show me where I can find this information on X, Y, or Z, right? So that can be a way of mentoring that really doesn't exist in other youth projects, right? So that's really exciting. And then advocacy. Um, it broke my heart this past Thursday when I learned that my um, my colleague, his school is losing his computer his computer instructor, the computer specialist, which means that if anybody's going to do this, it'll be like the two of us. If the school has resources to, to even do that, um, which means nobody's managing the lab, right? I mean, this is pretty rough, and so that that broke my heart. But the the teacher, the non core curriculum teacher that is saying is Jim because that's federally mandated. I would like a federal mandate. Right? It's 2013. I don't know how computer teachers are not federally mandated to be in every school. Right? Let's have healthy kids that can also use a computer and maybe code, right? That would be amazing. So this really broke my heart. So we gotta move into some advocacy, right? So I'm really hard on our students. I'm really hard I'm like, look y'all, like y'all the model, <laughs> you know, they're gonna look at your site and make a judgment. Right, so there's a big story here. So that's what's next. 
Um, that's the end of my presentation right now. There's a, actually there's a thank you page oh. for all kinds of like Twitter, the you know, obligatory thank you. Um, I do mean it though. Thank you. Um, for the opportunity to present. Um, we have a demo day on what is it, August 29th. I see a few people in the room have RSVP'd already. If you have not, and you're a backer, please RSVP. We've got a good account for food. It'll be at Kennedy King College. So these are our Twitter handles. I haven't tweeted much in the last 10 weeks because I've, if I've not been teaching or figuring out how to teach this stuff, I've been biking. Uh, so I'm really stressed. <laughs> uh, so that's it. Um, that's the project. Um, uh, of course, we have photos, and I can go into more detail with folks afterward. Do you want to show off the website? Yes, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Um, so, so these are four sites of the 25. So this is Danesha Ballard. I really like her site. Again, obviously she's using Bootstrap to. I want to tell you a story real quick. So, a week after the students were first introduced to Bootstrap, right, they did their sites for the Wood Arts Festival. And then there was like a weekend. Then they came back on Monday, and they had to present to the clients. So they were going back to Bootstrap. The Bootstrap web page, like, make sure everything was right. And it was changed. It was like Bootstrap 3 RC1. I'm like, oh, it's purple and it's hot, you know? And I was like, whoa, this is crazy, right? Uh, so, what do we do? You know, so they stayed with Bootstrap 2. I was like, you don't have to change all your code. You can stay with Bootstrap 2. So, we went through that and then we had a check in. Each team had to decide moving forward for demo day for their team website and their individual websites, right? Will you stay with Bootstrap 2? Or will you move to Bootstrap 3? What are the pros and cons of that decision? Four teams decided to stay with 2. One team said, we're going for 3, right? <laughs> so, right? But the ones with 2 were like, we already have like this base of code. Of course, Kai was like, already got this like thing I'm building, everybody's using. I'm just going to stay, you know. So it was cool, right? Um, so as you see, this is uh, the Go-Getters, uh, Inglewood Arts Festival, a screenshot of their page. Uh, they have since, yeah, go ahead. And so this is a carousel, so that's why we we did JavaScript. That was like, and then we stopped. <laughs> um, that's the team, the go-getters. Uh, one of the best teams, I think, of the project. Uh, it's really cool because Brian's an excellent leader, but he's not the technical leader, right? Danasia and Kamara are the strongest coders. He knows how to step back and let them lead, and he knows how to come in and bring everybody back together, right? Very mature leader, right? Uh, he's at Paul Robeson High School, which is on nobody's list of great schools, right? But he is an amazing leader. Uh, Kamara is at Limbloom, uh, and this is them working on their uh, wireframe. Keep going. So this is Denisha's website. She hand-coded this all by herself with the help of Twitter boost, right? right. Um, so it's pretty exciting. She has like her nice pinks here, you know, like the whole gradient. Really exciting. You see, you see how, go back to the, the, the last one. Right? You, you see how serious awesome. he looks? You see him? He looks like this, this project manager. <laughs> you can kind of see the stress on the face, like, come on, really? Like, really going, right? um, so it's pretty exciting. Um, and there's the Nadesha over here, like, out front handling, like, the, the broad structure. Let's go to uh, Marquise's website. Uh, so this is him. He has this whole um, site. So he has this button. I'm not sure what it does. Click it, see what happens. Oh, wow. OK. So he just used the button to go to a link. Uh, here we go, scroll up. Take a look at his resume. He has one of the better formatted resumes. So this brings up the question of leadership. So it was not enough to just to teach code, we had to teach leadership, right? Like, you know, what does it mean to present yourself? Uh, and so uh, they did their, it was one of the better weeks. They learned about a resume, right? They formatted a resume in Word. And then I came in and was like, all right, code it in, in, in HTML. They're like, oh, unordered lists, list items. Right, H4, H3, right? Like they, so doing all this cool stuff is really exciting. So they were marking up their resume with pencils, right? And then writing the code, right? So that's the idea of uh, Martha. And so Marquise has his links to social networking. And we all know that GitHub is social coding. So, you know, he's on Facebook, Twitter, and GitHub, right? <laughs> Which is pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. Um, and this is his stuff, right? So Eight followers. Look at all those. Commits. <laughs> <laughs> Over 500. Right? So we have, uh, you know, 20 some odd teams in, uh, in Inglewood that are making commits on. Oh, you just yeah. need to tell them to work on his commit messages. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like you've never done it. <laughs> so it's. Um, 
No, it, it's it's. Uh, I was like, you should make notes to yourself. I think it's also that they're editing on the web in GitHub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the thing about that. Yeah, yeah. And, they, test loop. <laughs> and they, uh, I will say this: they've been taught how to create a branch, how to merge it. I think some just say, "I'm just going to add NGH page and keep it moving." Right? But, but, um, but that's that. I did say, "Look, y'all, this is real." Like, people can look and say, "Oh, you're doing it wrong," you know. But, um, <laughs> right. But let's go to Kai Massey. So. Before he had all this crazy, like lightning and stuff, like this, <laughs> you know. Before that, it was like this road moving, it's like these gifts. It was like, what is going on? That's a background, you know. Checkered, right? Over and over again, it's just too much, right? But click on my bio, right? And that's Kai, always looking way too slick. Uh, go ahead and let's see what's going on in his carousel. There we go. This is I guess his baby pictures and stuff. Check this out. Um, uh, click that. That's his JavaScript button. <laughs> 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 so this, so this, this is, let me just, let me just say that I know we we'll published the recording. So when we taught JavaScript, this said meet JavaScript, right? Okay, watch, I've been using the same. Um, and so the name was JavaScript, right? My nickname, JS, right? Uh, extent of JS creator, um, what is it? There we go, right? I, right? Uh, the, the whole kind of role thing. And then uh, year uh, 95, the, the day we taught JavaScript, uh, we had a whole playlist of hits that came out in 95, right? Like Candy Rain, and you know, this is how we do it, and, you know, and all this other stuff, right? So it was pretty cool. So they were jamming uh, and trying to learn JavaScript the second time. So it was pretty fun, right? So they used some of the code they've used and learned, uh, and I made no changes to it. I was like, extension, what are you, you're a human being, you know? <laughs> like, make that like your, you know, GitHub profile name, you know, change it, right? So he insists on embedding, you know, uh, YouTube videos in his site with music. Um, go ahead and go to Samaya. Samaya actually joined our project, like, after a halfway point, right? She was part of another internship program we have. She was a little bored, so we brought her in. We had space for her. Uh, and she learned very quickly, right? And so this is a picture of one of our leadership sessions. Look at that room and look at that like gigantic projector, right? It was really cool. Um, scroll down, you can see her uh, screen was like this container in a well with this background. Um, so yeah, these are some of the better sites. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Like, I, it's just really fun to see the students like bring all of themselves with like their coloring and you know, design swag uh, to the table. Um, yeah, I was, I was, um, she was saying, you know, web codes. I was like, no, no, code is a noun and a verb. It is singular and plural, right? Like, it's just, it is everything, right? <laughs> and so she had to, uh, she had to make some um, basic changes. So these are some of the sites, and uh, we will be featuring all the sites on the 29th of August. So thank you for your time, and thank everybody who backed the project and we're we're going to keep sailing on into fall. So, awesome. That was, that was awesome. Like, you've done a ton in 10 weeks. Like, that's way more. I mean, I, I knew you where you were going with it, but like, you did a lot. Like, that's impressive. Not half what we wanted to do. Yeah, right. Well, that's what, so, you're going to continue on in the fall? Yeah. And there's so funding for that? About half of students. Uh, we're actually going to have a smaller group. Okay. So we'll have about half the students will stay, um, and we'll have a few students. That's awesome. Cool. So, uh, all right. Well, so now is the, I guess the portion of the night where we can break off and actually do hacking. Uh, so, uh, you guys are free to stay in this room. You are also free to go use the rest of the 1871 space. Um, come on, you and stick around. If anybody has questions for you, um, I'm sure they do. Uh, so, come on, stick around. Christopher, uh, you're going to do your Open Web 101. So. Uh, each week I do a Civic Hacking 101 to kind of orient you to the world that is Civic Hacking. Um, it's a courage for people who are here for the first time. Um, is anybody interested in uh, kind of going through the class? Okay, cool. So what you'll do is you'll walk into this hallway. There'll be some couches this direction. Head over there, and I'll be there as soon as I put the camera away. Uh, any other? Is our uh, relationship guy? Oh, hey, what's hey, up, man? How's it hey, going? How's it going? Yeah. Did you want to make an announcement or anything? Or? Uh, yeah, sure. How much time do I have? Like two or three minutes? That's all, yeah. folks. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs>